More than once, she was taken to hell to witness and feel the suffering firsthand. Sister Josepha was reluctant to write on the subject of hell and did so only to conform to her Lord's wishes. She wrote about her experiences in her journal. She described hell as the greatest torment due to the soul's inability to love. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. My name is Yuri Kazi if you are new. And yeah, without wasting any time, let's get to the video. Number 5. Sister Josefa Menendez Yes, she's not a priest, but this story needs to be told. This young Spanish sister, who had a short religious life of great suffering, experienced revelations throughout much her life. More than once, she was taken to hell to witness and feel the suffering firsthand. Sister Josefa was reluctant to write on the subject of hell and did so only to conform to her Lord's wishes. She wrote about her experiences in her journal. She described hell as the greatest torment due to the soul's inability to love. She wrote, One of these damned souls cried out, This is my torture that I want to love and cannot. There is nothing left in me but hatred and despair. If one of us could so much as make a single act of love, but we cannot, we live on hatred. As mentioned, she went to hell multiple times, but one time she saw the devil. She wrote, Souls were crying out, and the devil answered, Insinuate yourselves by inducing carelessness in them, but keep in the background so that you are not found out. Tempt these others into a ambition, to self-interest, to acquiring wealth without working, whether it be lawful or not. That entry was from February 1923. She visited Hal many times after that, but didn't report on seeing the devil ever again. Question. Do you believe that uh, people actually go to heaven or uh, hell in their dreams? And um, Because uh, there's no way of proving this, but you never know. The problem is that uh, every major religion or uh, religion that has ever existed, there are people there who claim to have been to their own versions of uh, heaven or hell. And uh, they cannot all be right, you know. So what do you think? Coming in at number four is Father Gerald Robinson. In the year 1980, Father Robinson was the priest for the chapel at Toledo Mercy Hospital. But when one of the chapel's oldest nuns was found brutally killed, Father Robinson became the lead suspect for the crime. Sister Margaret Paul was found with 31 strangely shaped stab wounds all over her body, some of which formed an upside down cross over her heart and with a smear of blood across her forehead, symbolizing a mockery of her last rites. When Father Robinson was initially brought in for questioning, his Monsignor interrupted the police interview and escorted him out to leave. There were no other suspects and the horrifying case went cold for 23 years. But then, in 2003, investigators were sent an anonymous letter from a woman who called herself Survivor Doe. It outlined the corruption she'd experienced under Father Robinson. She said that he, as well as other nuns, routinely abducted her during satanic rituals, and that often these rituals involved human sacrifice. She believed Sister Paul was one of these sacrifices. With these new allegations, authorities reopened the case, and with new DA technologies available, they were able to prove the weapon in the nearly three decade old cold case was Father Robinson's letter opener, and convicted him for the crime in 2006. Number 3. Unnamed Priest In the Catholic Church, the seal of confession is the absolute duty of priests or anyone who happens to hear a confession to not disclose anything that they learn. But this story was posted online. My grandmother's brother was a Catholic priest and for the most part he followed his oath to the letter. However, there was a situation where his humanity changed that respect. There was a guy who had confessed to multiple killings and to other people who were still missing. The person who confessed to these crimes was a regular at the church and my uncle was very torn up about this. He never said anything about the confession with the other priests but he told me that he prayed about it and he felt that God wanted him to make sure that the other people would be safe. My uncle had a friend he went to school with on the police force and he privately told his friend of this confession and his friend kept where he got this information from and started a personal investigation. As it turned out, the man was arrested and convicted. This was the only time my uncle said he went against his oath and the church, and all the way up to his death, he never regretted what he did because he believed there are circumstances when a priest should not be bound to his oath. I
I have to agree to this. If you kill someone or cause serious harm to them and confess it, I feel like that should be reported to protect others. Come yeah, if you are a priest, what uh, will you do? Would you have uh, stuck to your oath or, uh, or told uh, the authorities? I, I, I also think uh, that uh, someone like that uh, shouldn't uh, be around to should not be allowed to roam around and do whatever. So, yeah, I agree with her. Coming in at number two is Hans Schmidt. Born in Germany in 1881, Schmidt knew early on that he wanted to be a priest, but he was also sort of a weird kid with a dark appetite for blood and gore, routinely caught killing animals and drinking their blood. Spoiler alert, these two passions would collide in a very bad way. By age 25, he was ordained, but after only four years serving in Germany, he got into some hot water with higher ups and was forced to relocate to Louisiana. Soon after, he was butting heads with the leaders, and so he moved to Manhattan and began working at St. Boniface Church. It was here that he met the woman who changed everything, Anna a Mueller. She was the church's newly hired housekeeper, and shortly after Schmidt's arrival, the two began an affair. After Schmidt says God told him to love her, Schmidt was once again transferred to a different church in Harlem, potentially due to someone learning of the affair, but despite this, he continued his secret relationship with Anna, and the two even had a secret wedding where Schmidt vowed to leave the priesthood for her. But soon after, Anna fell pregnant, and Schmidt knew that everything could be taken from him if word got out he had broken his vow of celibacy. Then, as he tells it, in the midst of an intimate affair with Anna, Schmidt heard God demand he sacrifice her. So one night while she was sleeping, he slit her throat and dismembered her body before taking advantage of the corpse and throwing it into the Hudson River. Then, after he killed her, he went to mass as if nothing had happened. He was eventually tried and sentenced to death, where at first he tried to claim insanity before admitting to everything. To date, he is the first and only priest executed in the United States. He was probably just a psychopath, you know, just uh, insane. And uh, I never knew that uh, this happened, but uh, I think there's still a lot uh, that we don't know. And I link uh, this video if you want to watch the full video in the description. Number one, Father Jose Manioga. He is a priest of St. Augustine, Florida, and he says he died in a traffic accident in 1985 where he was taken by his guardian angel to visit heaven, hell, and purgatory and came back to life to continue his ministry as a priest. He was struck head on by a drunk driver and he met his guardian angel upon death, a figure that was bright, beautiful, and radiant. His angel told him he was going to meet God, but he first wanted to show him hell and purgatory. Hell, he said, was a sea of unquenchable fire with demon-like monsters, lost souls that were dirty, filthy, and ugly. Numbered among the souls were priests and bishops who were not faithful to their calling as shepherds. He also noted a great deal of hatred and infighting that occurred between the eternally condemned. In purgatory, he had the opportunity to speak to the suffering souls. They were all sad, stained, and anxious to go to heaven, and they begged for his prayers. He said heaven shined like the sun and included millions of souls praising God. He met Christ, the Blessed Mother, and St. Joseph. He said, Our Lord told me that my second life he had a great mission for me, that I would come back to life and I would work in a foreign land. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below which one you think was the creepiest. See you next time. I have a hard time believing in personal testimonies. Because you can't really prove them. Yeah, sure they could uh, they could have happened, but uh, I really doubt they did. I mean, uh, there's so many people claiming to have been taken to heaven or hell, and uh, it's usually the same thing over and over again. And the first uh, thing they do when they supposedly uh, go for, go to hell and come back is write a book or uh, open up a YouTube channel or uh, start uh, uh, their own churches or uh, something like that. So I really have a hard time of believing these people. And it's never usually specific to one religion. You know, every religion has, their own, has its own version of heaven and hell and uh, people claiming to have been there. 
so i, I don't know i i, I really doubt uh, i doubt uh, those things a lot so i mean but what do you think this was a very interesting video uh, go check uh, the channel out if you're interested and yeah thank you for watching and see you amazing people in the next video